I just rolled over my toe. <laughs> oh, problem with wheelie chairs. Anyway, today is an exciting video because I'm gonna learn how to paint with gouache. So I'm really excited to learn more about it with my artist friend, Anna's new book called Gouache in Four Easy Steps. Anna has thought so in depth of every single thing you need to know about gouache, which is good because I don't know anything or not a lot. <laughs> in the start of the book, she really goes into gouache techniques, tips and exercises. So this is just like some really helpful pages on what even is gouache, what's the right consistency, how to use different brush strokes with gouache. And then the book goes into different tutorials. So we've got landscapes inspired by nature, and then she's got stunning flowers. I'm kind of being drawn to this magnolia here. I really want to give that a go. Maybe we should paint that together today. Leaves and plants which I'm loving these little cactuses. Then we've got cute patterns, adorable birds. I mean, look at that flamingo. Who doesn't love a flamingo? I don't want to meet a person that doesn't love a flamingo. Beautiful butterflies, bumblebees, and more. So they're really cute little insects. Delicious desserts, lollipops, yummy fruits and veggies. And we've got super cute sundries. And yeah, she just goes into great detail about how to paint all these gorgeous, beautiful illustrations. So, well, that's my day booked up. <laughs> I am being drawn to the magnolia. So let's paint it together. So I have the book here and I'm, this is on page 51, branch of magnolia. And so let's have a look at the instructions. I just think this is so beautiful. So the brushes that I'm using today are by Zen Art Fake Squirrel. I'll link to all the supplies in the description box. Okay, so I've just read that page through. So let's get started. So here we've got like detailed instructions, which is good for me because with gouache, I, I don't know where to start. So she says, start by making a light sketch of the flowery branch, and once the sketch is ready, to move on to the painting itself. Okay, so step number one is to draw out the magnolia. So I'm just gonna use a pencil to do that. Okay. Okay, so she says in the book next, using the filbert brush, or I'm gonna use a flat, I think. I might use a flat or a round. No, I use a flat, I use a flat. Actually, no, I'm gonna use a round. <laughs> oh, decisions, decisions, okay. Oh, I don't have any paint out. <laughs> I'm using a mixture of the Windsor & Newton Designer's Gouache and Arteza Gouache. I think we have five colors and I have five little dish holes. So that works out very well. I'm gonna, um, I think that might be too much. I don't think I need much of this. Green and white. I have a feeling we'll be using quite a lot of the white, which is why I bought a bigger tube. We're using tint of pink one, which is rose and white proportion four to one. So we want four parts rose and one part white. So in the book, she goes through like what consistency you need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make the consistency that she outlined earlier on in the book. And that's why it's really great because it doesn't just give you these, but it also and goes into gouache, how to use it, how to mix it. Um, as I say, the right consistencies and all that sort of stuff. And it is just like a complete one gouache 101 book, which is why it's really great for beginners. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and Colour the magnolia and the bud. And if you've got the right consistency, then you shouldn't really be able to see the pencil sketch underneath anymore. Okay, so then I'm going in with the bud. Okay, that looks kind of like the picture, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> so I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm gonna read what the next stage is. Okay, so step two, it says, let's make the flower more realistic. For this, add the layer of shadows in the tint pink too. 
Uh, I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush then and the, I'm going to keep the detail brush on hand as well. So this is eight parts pink to one part white. And I know I've started getting pink in my white. <laughs> I guess I'm just a lazy artist. Ooh, that's pretty. So we're coming outside of this petal. I don't like the bigger, bulkier areas. But I'm gonna go in with the small detail brush as well. Uh, mainly just for these lines here. Okay, let's read the next stage while we're here, while, we, while we're waiting for that to dry. So it says step three. Uh, step three, and this step will combine the composition. Take a small round brush and add the branches in the tint of pink three, according to figure four. Ooh, it's exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna take my uh, smaller detail brush because we're doing the branches. Ooh, that is a luscious color. Okay, so let's go in with the branches then. I just feel like this is where I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> So I've done the branch, it's all right, the world didn't end. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna add some more shadows in the flower. I've got blue paint in my hair and I've not even got any blue paint out. I feel like it's, it's coming together. I'm starting to see it take shape. So let the painted layer dry completely. Now you can paint the leaves and some green, detail green details in the tint of green. The only problem is I don't like that color of green. I think I'm gonna swap my green out. Maybe mix it, because I'm not totally sure on that colour of green, so. Okay, so, although my green says it's green, my actual green looks more like the one on the page. So I'm going to go for what looks like most, the colour on the page. So basically, just pop in the leaves. Ooh, that's fun. You don't even have to draw with it, you can just literally use the shape of the brush to create the shape. And then we've got a few little leaves in extra places. I've actually changed a couple of the leaves by accident. <laughs> I didn't realise, I've done them on the opposite way. Oh well, that's fine. Ooh, it's coming together. Okay, so next, what's next? Step four. After all this work, we need to add the details to complete the painting. So we need a pastel pink, a small bit of pink, and a lot of white, basically. Oh, I've completely contaminated the white now. There's no hope for the white. <laughs> I've got a pastel pink ready to go. So what do we do with it? Let's see. Let's start with this petal. So I think we go... So I'm using the main bit of my brush to add down most of the paint and then I'm just going to use the very tip just to drag that out with the small lines that you can see there. This is so therapeutic. Like I seriously could just chill out all day and just complete this whole book full of paintings. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. You know, you could get a glass of wine or just get lots of coffee and treats and have a whole day just painting all the different um, illustrations from this book. Like I genuinely think that would be an amazing day. Maybe I'll schedule it in one day. Go in with the pastel pink onto the bud. I am loving where this is going. I might put it in my bedroom when it's done. Okay, so I've done the pastel pink. Oh, have I? Oh, I haven't. There's more pastel pink. There's a bit of pastel pink on the branch itself. So I'm gonna use some of the pastel pink and just create that highlight. Oh, it's so pretty. 
So I'm feeling like my branch is too thin. So what I'm gonna do, I've still got this color that I used for the branch. I'm just gonna thicken it up a little bit. Oh yeah, so we've got to do white next. So it says to wait for that to dry, but I think that's already dry. So I'm gonna go in with some white. I might just pop a bit over here because it's easier to use over here. Oh, I feel like we're nearly finished. I really feel like the white just zaps. It just brings like so much pow energy. It looks so good against all the different layers. It really just brings it to life. Oh, there's some pastel pinks on the leaves, so I'm gonna go and do those bit. So I don't actually have a dark green, so what I'm gonna do is make one using a bit of green and the uh, burnt sienna. All my greens are really bright for some reason. But that's fine, we can make it. Uh, oh yeah, this is bringing so much dimension to the painting. Okay, and then I think the last step is to add some white details on the leaves and the branches. So I'm just gonna let that dry for a minute. So I think our magnolia is finished. I really like it. I think it looks very sophisticated. <laughs> and it certainly doesn't look like someone who doesn't know how to use gouache and hasn't used it much before. I think that is a success. So you can see it side by side, the book. I think that's not bad going. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm really excited to do more of these now. Like, I feel like I'm sort of addicted. <laughs> I just wanna create, oh, what do I wanna make? I definitely wanna try the beetle because I just love all like the reflections and I'm genuinely like really intrigued as to how you can get so many dimensions with gouache. I just really wanna thank Anna for creating this book. If I'd had this book on the start of my art journey, like the difference it would have made. Definitely, if there's any of you out there that is looking to try gouache, then I 100 and million percent recommend Anna's book. It's absolutely perfect for learning those techniques. So definitely go and check out Anna's book, show her some love, show her some support. She's also got an Instagram where you can go and check out what she's up to. She does actually upload lots of tutorials on Instagram as well, so definitely go and check out her Instagram. And yeah, just a massive thank you to Anna, and um, hope you all have a beautiful creative day. Thanks guys, bye!